cabin fever. All right, I'm young. I'm alive. Okay, we'll do a proof. But first, there's some things you need to know. A proof is just a series of logical steps that prove the truth of a theorem. Before we prove anything, we're given some information. We'll use this given information to set up our theorem, which in this case proves a property of vertical angles we're already familiar with. Our theorem says that two vertical angles are congruent to one another. So, given that angle 1 and angle 2 are vertical angles, we'll prove that angle 1 and angle 2 are congruent. And in a broader sense, we'll prove that two vertical angles are congruent. One more thing. As we go through the process of proving theorems, we'll set up a proof table. We'll put statements on the left and reasons on the right. You may not understand why we do each step right now, but don't worry, it'll all make sense in the end. Here we go. We'll begin by stating our given information. Angle 1 and angle 2 are vertical angles. No big whoop. Our second statement is, the sum of the measures of angle 1 and angle 3 equals 180 and the sum of the measures of angle 2 and angle 3 equals 180. How do we know this? Because angle 1 and angle 3 form a straight angle, which measures 180 degrees. Ditto for angle 2 and angle 3. Our reason, this is the definition of a straight angle. Next, we'll set the sum of the measures of angle 1 and angle 3 equal to the sum of the measures of angle 2 and angle 3. Our reason is the substitution property, because, as we saw in step 2, each side of the equation equals 180. Our fourth step is setting the measure of angle 3 equal to the measure of angle 3. Our reason? It's the good old reflexive property. Now that we've established that the measure of angle 3 is equal to itself, our next step is to subtract the measure of angle 3 from each side. Our reason here is just plain old everyday algebra. Once we do that, we're left with the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 2. And because of the definition of congruent angles, we know angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. So we've proved the theorem that says vertical angles are congruent. We all enjoy proving theorems. Now, don't forget all the tools that you have at your disposal when doing proofs. There's given information, definitions, postulates, algebra, algebraic properties, and previously proven theorems. Remember the two types of reasoning we discussed earlier in the tape? Inductive and deductive? Proofs are an excellent example of both inductive and deductive reasoning. Setting a goal for a proof is an inductive process. And because we support each step by reason, we're thinking deductively. So, our little brains are really working. <laughs> we'll look at some more proofs in a few minutes. But for now, it's time for a little look back. An angle is formed by two rays that share an endpoint. Adjacent angles are coplanar angles that share a common vertex and side. Complementary angles are two angles whose measures add up to 90 degrees. Supplementary angles are two angles whose measures add up to 180 degrees. Vertical angles are congruent. An angle bisector is a ray that splits an angle smack dab in the middle. Perpendicular lines are two lines that form right angles where they intersect. And a proof is a series of logical steps that prove the truth of a theorem. Section C, Parallel Lines and Angles. As we discussed earlier, parallel lines are two or more lines that are contained in a plane and never touch. To watch more free educational videos, visit our website, studioforlearning.tv. Stretch your brain online.